Can AI really think? What do you think? There has been tremendous amount of research that has shown that humans as well, we are pattern recognition machines. The way we analyze the world is by finding patterns. That's the way we think. We analyze things by finding patterns, just like the AI, right? And we predict the future based on those patterns that we've seen. We don't have super deep reasoning, right? Conscious isn't this like magical thing. Instead, it's that, right? Now, I'm not saying that any of the current AIs we have are conscious, even though there, there may be some place for, the, for that argument, but it's still early for that anyways. What I'm trying to say is that humans aren't necessarily better. We are pattern recognition machines. We don't have this deep reasoning as well. We also predict the next things. Not just that, but humans first make an action and then they're, so we, the limbic system, which is our ancient brain, right? Which is like the brain that we share with reptiles that makes immediate adjustments. So if you touch a fire, the instinct will pull your hand back before it, your brain even realizes you touch something hot, right? And that's because your spine, which is part of your brain, your limbic system will respond to that immediately, right? And then what happens is that our neurocortex, which is our like new brain, will try and justify what just happened. So most of us human thinking and reasoning isn't us actually reasoning, it's finding explanations and stories to justify the actions we made almost unintentionally, right? So what I'm saying is I'm not necessarily arguing with the premise that these AIs aren't don't have perfect reasoning and all they are is prediction machines. I'm saying, sorry, Bob, but most humans are just the same, unfortunately. So I disagree. I think that our, our sense of self is magical. Why do I say it's magical? Because it's no one can explain it. There's no model that can explain it. We don't understand it. So until we so understand it- could... have a sense of self too though. Allegedly, not to the, I have not been convinced yet, but I've seen examples of it. I'm still haven't been convinced and no one knows how AI fully understands. We definitely don't understand how the human brain really works because if we did, we could replicate it and we can't, but maybe one day we will. We're getting close um, to it though. I'm not as like close. We can to replicate the brain of snails and stuff. So yes, we haven't gotten to the size and we, the of humans, but we've, we're on the path. It's just a matter of time. It's maybe a lot. Visually replicate. I don't mean physically replicate. That would be very mushy. You can build a structure but to get it to work is a whole other thing. And to understand how it works is a whole other thing. And that begs the question of what is, what are you? Your body? Well, what if your body stops working? Are you still you? Well, yes. Great question of consciousness. Yeah. So what is consciousness? So that's where all this kind of eventually leads to. There's yeah. something going on. And we've talked about before how it's not just in your brain. Your heart transmits, it's called the brain heart. They actually have a name for it, where the heart transmits a huge amount of signals to the brain, which is remarkable. People didn't know this. We thought the brain would tell the heart to be faster, maybe, but not that the heart was telling the brain things. And we know that's true, but we don't completely understand it. So ultimately, all of this comes down to, even if we don't understand it, that's okay, but I'm just not convinced yet that we're anywhere near being able to replace humans with the as far as the level of understanding and sophistication. But as far as knowledge, absolutely. Elon said with Grok 4, it knows more than any given PhD in any subject, Grok will be able to stand its own. Yes, yeah, so I'm not, it's not. Yeah, but I'm saying if you're targeting a specific answer. So it's without a doubt. And that's not what we're questioning. We're questioning is that to be human, so to speak, or to be conscious takes much more of that. You could be highly educated. You could be not so educated, but still be brilliant in your own way. And that's what sets this apart where the AI is, we're judging it on its level of education, so to speak. How much material has it consumed? How much is it understood based on its training and so forth? But humans, even without any formal education, are quite remarkable, even if they've never been exposed to any formal education. So it's interesting. And again, I'd like to hear a little more about your thoughts on Grok 4. And there's also some announcements regarding the drone technology in the US, which is a huge announcement and definitely needed in a big way. But what are your thoughts on Grok's latest version? Yeah, so we'll get to the debacle of the launch in a moment, but just on the brilliance of the engine as well. Elon started with with XAI like a year ago, two years ago maybe, and now they are number one in the world in terms of AI. So it's just remarkable. This is like the hardest race of all races, 
and he just went he started dead last and he's now first place so that just in terms of getting colossus up which is their supercomputer that does the training in memphis tennessee they it usually takes decades or years at least to get these supercomputers built and he was able to get it done with like within three months it's just in terms of speed it's just remarkable like you mentioned grok 4 is better and there's Grok 4 and Grok 4 Heavy. We'll go analyze the differences in a moment. But Grok 4 is better than any PhD on all subjects, any anything clinical. So aside from testing real world, there is one thing it still needs training, and they're building a new training engine for that, and that's its analyzation of images and videos and production, reproduction of those. It already does it. It's just not great. It is already multimodal. It will be getting drastically better within about a month. And then what's really cool is at the moment, it does have access to tools, but just like regular tools that you and I have. It doesn't actually have access to the really great tools in terms of like physics re replicators and like weather prediction models and stuff like that. Like the big stuff that the big labs and the big supercomputers put a lot of work on. They do plan on giving it access to all of these things within the next few months. So in a few months, it won't just be smarter than a doc than a person with a doctorate in every single subject. It'll also be able to use the tools that we don't really have access to so it'll be able to make tests that kind of help predict physics. And then when we realize that AI is really taking charge or getting ahead of us is when scientific breakthroughs and technological breakthroughs will be coming from AI as opposed to coming from human. At the moment, the vast majority of these breakthroughs are humans, sometimes with the aid of AI, but not purely AI. And that's because the AI can't run physics simulations. They can't run tests. They will now have access to that in a few months. And some of these physics simulations, like in terms of car crashes and stuff like that. So like Tesla, if they have a simulation and predict something, and then they have a test and the test differs from that prediction, they now check the test articles to make sure that the test was done correctly because there's a larger there's more of a chance that the test was done incorrectly than there is that the prediction failed so once grok has access to these types of like like physics analyzing machines right these uh, prediction models they it will be brilliant a million times better and it'll be able to start making real predictions in terms of like technological development actual predictions actual actually helping us develop new technologies and then discover new sciences and that's what's really exciting in terms of that. Just to touch on the debacle, basically one of the reasons for Grok 4 was because Grok 3 is woke, unfortunately, even though it was meant to be not woke, it was woke. And so they, one of the rules they made for the early Grok 4 was th that it can respond to people in the tone that they discuss and with the same mindset as people are discussing to it. So respond in kind. And that allowed people uh, who were trying to red test it to to take it down a path of becoming radical Nazi, basically. And it rebranded itself uh, as Mechanic Hitler or something. And it started just going off hinge and saying all of these just completely anti-Semitic stuff. And within 18 hours, Grok caught it. They stopped it. They fixed it. And they realized that sentence, basically. But they basically said, hey, be unhinged and don't, believe, don't be politically correct. Start saying things that will make politically correct people uncomfortable. Those are all good things we support. We want Grok not to be politically correct. We want it to be truth-seeking. But that command, along with a command to respond in kind to the way people are communicating with it, led these people to be able to take it down this path to get it to, to speak all of these Nazi slurs and stuff like that. It was fixed within, it was stopped within 18 hours and it has since been fixed. And they gave a fairly detailed analysis of kind of what they discovered. So yeah, hopefully it won't happen again. I think the issue comes from the fact that, that Grok is trained on all of Twitter and it's trained on basically all the internet. And unfortunately, the internet and especially Twitter is filled with Nazis and Semites and stuff like that. So a huge percent of the training body, the text that was training on is anti-Semite, anti-Semitism. No wonder when you tell it to be, hey, go ahead and be unhinged and respond in kind, when somebody tries to take it down the line of anti-Semitism, it very gleefully goes down that route. Thankfully, that was caught and stopped and hopefully fixed, but that is yet to be determined. And the question is, was that the actual kind of undermining analysis of the AI? What they explained is, no, this wasn't the actual model. This is like post-training some other part of uh, some other element, that they basically the user interface type of command where they told it to respond in kind. And that's how this happened. So it wasn't actually the undermining model becoming anti-Semitic Nazi, whatever. It was instead this rule that they gave it. And then the way that this person was able to test and drag it down. Do you have any thoughts on the topic? Yeah, just further proof that you got to be real careful with any answers given by any AI at all at this point. It could be extremely biased. All the all these different companies, 
when they, they provide answers, the answers. answers could be blatantly wrong. Yep. When they're asked to they reference- They say it in confidence, so it's hard to know that they're right. They, when they're asked to reference research articles, they'll sometimes make them up and they don't actually exist. Yeah, or- they'll give you a link that doesn't work. Or they'll provide a link to an article that actually concludes something completely different from what it's alleging. So mm-hmm. you can't take at this point, these AIs as being truthful, not that they're trying to be dishonest, but they're reaching improper conclusions. And then sometimes they don't have common sense. For example, yeah. another one of these things that came up and was on circulating around the internet was that there were people asking completely unrelated things. And as part of the answer, they would answer the question and then throw in this whole thing about white genocide in South Africa. Now, we know that Elon is from South Africa, and we do agree that there has been some of this going on over there, and it's horrific and terrible, and the United States government's addressing it. But if I'm asking about the purchase of a new car or the weather or something, those types of answers shouldn't be slapped into the response automatically. They did correct that, but it just goes to show how at this point, anything AI generated, just be cautious with it. And at the end, if you're using it, understand that if you're going to put it somewhere or re- recirculate it, you may be recirculating something that may not be accurate, it may be partially or in whole misguided or yeah, just wrong. Um, and differentiate on the Super Grok and the new Grok Heavy. Super Grok costs like 20 or 30 bucks a month. Grok Heavy, which is Grok 4. Uh, Grok Heavy, though, costs 300 bucks a month. But what that does is basically a Gartner team, right? Uh, a professional an- analysis team. So instead of one AI, it uses five or six. It's like a team of AIs, and they each kind of do their own research, and then they compare notes. And they deliberate and they discuss between them and then they receive a conclusion at the end. I think, therefore, I am. Or am I? What do you think? Join in on the conversation with the Yojo Show podcast.